on music featuring your main man, Tony the Sugar Baggy. Hello, everybody out there tonight. My name is Tony the Sugar Baggy. We are here at <clears throat> episode 75. Cannot believe we have made it three quarters of the way through sharing music with you. I do appreciate it. I appreciate you joining me today. I appreciate you joining in on all the awesome stuff that is on the Sadistic Penguin Studios YouTube channel. Um, but let's jump right in and get this musical extravaganza started. Okay, uh, new releases. If you have not got a chance, uh, head on down to the uh, sadisticpenguinstudios.com. Um, lots of good articles, lots of awesome stuff, um, lots of different variety if you're looking for, for that kind of thing. But in the musical variety this past Monday, we decided we were going to talk about some new albums that have dropped uh, this past June um, so far. And uh, a couple of these albums um, that I've gone through is Ad Actress is Static, um, a band by Darren Cunningham. Um, you could read a little bit more into all of this if you go to the article. Um, pretty much 47-minute uh, dreamlike vibes. Uh, check that out. Um, check out... Uh, Charlie XCX, uh, Brat, okay, I'm, I'm always requested to hear lots of different stuff, and this one gave me oh, some really awesome, what I would think is to be uh, electro-pop vibes that usually we have not covered a lot here, and we would cover more if they're brought to our attention, and this one um, was brought to our attention, Brat is um, the new one there, um, also, a new album, Eels. The Eels are out with the, uh, the, their 15th album. It's always awesome to uh, think of a band who's been around long enough to encapsulate 15 albums. But uh, the Eels are there, and uh, they are uh, a little bit uh, one that we've talked about a couple times here. Um, this band, Islands, What Occurs. I uh, saw the little clip, a little commercial of this band and it uh, drew me in and uh well it put me into another dimension with different sounds and different vibes um but that one was called islands what occurs um pond stung um this is an australian band adventurous band if you're looking for this where they have a little bit of heavy a little bit of laid back uh a little bit of what this show is. It's heavy, it's laid back, it's funky, it's soulful. It's a little of everything that uh, pretty much is encapsulated into this Pond release. And uh, my good man, my good man, um, Andrew, uh, sent me this, this the Stygian Rose um, album by uh, Crip Sermon. Just a really, really interesting album that harkens back to that awesome classic uh, heaviness that we like to uh, talk about. We may even talk about a little bit later. Um, but uh, that being said, um, go back and check out that article from Monday. We're going to, at times, uh, drop these articles, uh, hopefully at least once a week, musical orientated. So keep your eyes and, uh, well, you could tune up your ears as you're reading it and listen in and let me know in the comments right below what you think of these uh, newest albums that are coming out. Uh, we have some new albums I know coming out next week. Nathaniel Ratliff and The Night Sweats. Man, I always got the night sweats. They are uh, going to be releasing a new album, so that's going to be very interesting to hear how that is going to sound. I cannot wait for that. Um, just this uh, past uh, week, uh, Stephen Van Zandt's Disciple was dropped on uh, Max. Um, honestly, I thought I knew everything I needed to know about Stephen Van Zandt, but I did not need to know I did not know I needed to know way much more than I already did know. I know that was a lot of a tongue tie here, but go and check this documentary out. Here's a little bit of a clip. It's from, um, from what you're going to be into um, if you are checking this out. To activist. Now I marry this fun rock and roll guy, and all of a sudden, he's in South Africa. Steve got to... A lot of in-depth stuff in this documentary. Um, Steven Van Zandt from being a part of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band to his own um, solo work um, with the Disciples and also a lot of awesome uh, work he did in the 80s that I was just not familiar with. Don't want to give too much of it away, but check this documentary out and get back to us and let us know what you think about it because um, honestly... It's, it's really cool to, again, two and a half hours, see somebody like Stephen Van Zandt, who we know from The Sopranos, as I stated, the East Street Band. But again, 
hearing tunes um, before the E Street Band or hearing tunes to hear, know that he has been a part of, um, so much a part of Southside Johnny, uh, who is another huge part of the whole entire uh, Jersey scene. So please check out this uh, Stephen Van Zandt documentary. I do not think you're going to be um, disappointed in, especially if you're looking for awesome stuff to... Uh, to, to dig into and learn a little bit more from one of uh, what I would deem to be a a, a, a just a, 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 a diamond in the whole entire rock and roll rough. Um, but uh, we were talking earlier about bands who are influential um, to, uh, let's say, metal. Um, the heavy metal scene, um, we were talking about a, a classic sound. Um, when I think back to me and some of my uh, beginnings of that classic heavy metal sound, it is not too hard to not think about uh, um, Sepultura because honestly they are to me just as important as a band like let's say Slayer or Pantera, a band who was just a, such a major force and not only uh, multiple different kinds of metal, thrash metal, death metal, groove metal, um, you know, they've also had a lot of influence on alternative metal, world music, new metal, hardcore punk, industrial metal. Honestly, some of the instruments in their music is some of the uh, beginnings of, I would think is, to me, digging into some of this stuff. Um, would never have heard some of these instruments if it wasn't for Sepultura first. Um, they just honestly were formed. Um in um in in a little place called Brazil um by Max and Igor Cavalera who sadly are no longer a uh, part of the band anymore which is is just really 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 unfortunate but uh who is a part of a band are are two members who have been part of, since since the 80s uh, Paulo Jr on bass and Andreas Kisser on lead guitar um, Derek Green, who's been the lead singer of this band since 1997, um, just really, honestly, another huge force if you ever get a chance to see them. Again, they're currently right now on their um, final tour, which is like, final tour? This can't be a final tour already. Um, but yeah, they're saying this is this is it. This is We are, we are wrapping this all up. We're not going to, uh, going to be doing this uh, much more. Um, by much more meaning that we're not going to uh, tour just anymore and you're going to have to come out and see us. So, like, honestly, as a huge fan of the band, I'm thinking to myself, I might have to definitely go out and see some of these dates because, uh, honestly, honestly, uh, it's a kickoff, uh, American kickoff, on uh, September 17th at the Concord Music Hall, okay, um, with a obituary agnostic front, uh, claustrophobia is going to be there, Um I wish it was the last show because uh, Andreas has sent out the flyer and said, hey, you know what? I think uh, Igor and Max, you should come on by there with their uh, Cavalier conspiracy. You know, ditch that a little while and come on over here and see what we got going on. This track right here, uh, track live, is from the album after Igor and Max left. Um, a little track called Choke. Still puts on a, a really, really, really great show. Um, honestly, I, I spend lots and lots of time digging into just everything that has to do with Sepultura on, on, on quite a bit of time. Um, also, 15 studio albums, uh, which the 15th was released in 2020. I don't believe that they're going to release any more um, studio albums, but you just never know. You know, you never know that 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 money that money talking um, that money talking beast. Um, seems to somehow uh, peek his, his head back. But uh, digging back into where I got my beginnings is um, 1991's Arise, which was their fourth studio album. Um, they produced it along with Scott Burns. Um, this is some of their first introductions into that Latin percussion that we talk about. Um, again, there are uh, some, some, some digs into industrial music, hardcore punk, like I said, a death thrash style. But again, when re-listening to this after listening to so much Slayer lately, it really, really fits in to um, the rest of their fold. Is just uh, a great, great, great metal release. Um, it's funny is that the band traveled to Florida to, uh, to work on this album. 
Brazil, Florida, I don't know uh, what it is. Um, but the, 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 the label, Roadrunner. Roadrunner Records, we're one day going to go in deep onto them because, man, so many awesome bands during this time period have, have come from this. But they were granted a $40,000 budget for this album, um, uh, just which was cool because it allowed cool things like drummer Igor Cavalera to spend a little bit more time testing that drum sound, which is exactly why I look a little bit deeper in a Sepultura is uh, the drum sound. Um, Before Arise, Beneath the Remains is really awesome, and so is Schizophrenia, which I ended up digging into later. Um, but uh, 1993's Chaos AD, to me, could be one of the most awesome uh, metal releases of all time. Um, just really, really, really um, heavy. Um, heavy, 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 heavy. Um, and before this, Paulo Jr. didn't uh, play bass. Um on any of the albums, but they decided to, uh, you know, uh, let Paulo Jr. be included on uh, playing on, on a little bit. But r recently I was uh, cutting the lawn and just, you know, a track one reviews, res refuse, resist, territory, slave new world. You're just not really going to, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, skimp out on, on the heaviness when you're talking to Sepultura. Um, the next album, Roots. Um, really, really awesome. Um, have spent time on this show talking about Roots because it's just such a great album. Um, not gonna lie, uh, when they came out with that first album with Derek Green against, that was heavily in my rotation. Um, was not very judgmental in that Max was replaced because Max had Soulfly. Did not feel like, oh my lord, we're not gonna get something awesome because, well, we're we're uh, we're, we're, we're we're losing this and we're we're losing that and you know honestly. You, you didn't lose a whole lot when you ended up digging into those later albums with Derek Green. Now, what would they sound like with Max's writing? We'll never know. We just will never know. But what we do know is that uh, just a solid, solid catalog. I mean, 15 albums is pretty solid. And a band going on their final, final tour definitely needs to uh, be talked about here a little bit tonight. Um, this show sometimes seems to be what I like to be is like snapshots into my mind of the way that I'm thinking throughout the week musically. And there's just really, honestly, we could spend hours and hours and hours and hours because that's about how much long I spend uh, musically. Um, coming up this Saturday, speaking of, if you are free, um, the 29th of June, um, Santana coming to town, Tinley Park. I'm going to be there playing with County Crows, but uh, the Santana, you may say, oh, I have not seen Santana. I mean, you may want to go see Santana. He is um, one of the greatest, uh, and by Santana, I mean Carlos Santana. The band is called Santana. Sometimes I get confused about that. Uh, Santana is the name of the band. Carlos Santana is the uh, lead guitarist and, um, honestly, the leader of Santana. But tonight, because I'm going to see these, these 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 great, great artists, I wanted to look a little deeper, especially into Santana's first couple albums, um, starting with Santana's debut, 1969's self-titled Santana. Um, just so, so many great songs. You just... Man, uh, ending an album with Soul Sacrifice is definitely sacrificing my soul to want to just keep listening to more and more and more of this album. <laughs> And honestly, a lot of the instruments, you wouldn't believe it, that are played on the Santana's debut, you could hear them on, especially Sepultura's Roots and Chaos AD, some of those 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 big bongo tribal type drums, just really sounding awesome, and definitely the debut album by Santana is definitely, definitely, definitely full of them. Jingo, Evil Ways, Soul Sacrifice, as you just heard, um, Persuasion, Waiting, um, just really great, great songs to really, especially for the summer. Um, and honestly, the band, um, generally starting as a, a freeform jam band, kind of like your Grateful Dead. And as they've gone on, they've changed multiple different styles. Um, but these first two albums, if you're looking for jamming and, and straight jams and straight, just awesome, 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 eclectic sounds, you're not going to really, uh, 
do worse than with uh, Santana at all. Um, second album, Abraxas, is really, really, really awesome in its own way. Um, just like the first one. Um, you're saying to yourself, how can they um, get better? Well, the cover is awesome. <laughs> just like the first album's cover. Um, that first album's cover with that line, I remember seeing finding my dad's cassette. Um, and I also remember hearing my dad always going, Abraxas, just a cool album title. Um, very, very awesome because there's just... Probably a, a, a song that you are most familiar with, um, which is a Fleetwood Mac cover, you wouldn't believe, but Black Magic Woman. Um, very familiar, but Oyo Como Va, Mother's Daughter, Hope You're Feeling Better, Seeing Winds, Crying Beasts. You're just really not going to uh, get much uh, worse than a couple albums from that uh, late 60s, um, early 70s uh, Santana output. So I'm kind of curious to see um, how many out of all these songs will be played from these first two albums? A lot of artists who tour seem to focus a lot on those first two albums, and then there's all those middle albums that they seem to ignore. Santana, by doing uh, some studying here and there, seems to also uh, fit just a little bit into um, that regard. But these albums just have so many great players. You may be saying, oh, who's uh, Greg Raleigh? I've never heard of him. Really? Because Greg Raleigh, he was part of Journey. His part, Journey on the Wheel in the Sky and the Lights on those first couple albums, Love and Touch and Squeeze, and yes, he was a part of Santana, um, which is not something that, you know, you're, 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 some people are shocked a, man, a member of Journey was part of Santana. But again, for a long time growing up, I was under the assumption that Carlos sang. No, Carlos doesn't really sing. He may sing a little bit, uh, he may sing some backing vocals, but uh, Carlos... Uh, was never known to be the lead singer on any of these Santana albums, which I honestly, I find to be pretty awesome that he, you know, a lot of singers or guitar players will, will end up using their not the best uh, vocals to, uh, to deliver, you know, on an album like this one. But uh, Santana really, 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 really has no problem with doing that. Has no problem with uh, just, just, just digging in a little bit, you know. Just like uh, another album that we're going to dig a little bit in tonight is uh, a little album that just really, uh, The Illmatic by Nas. Um, recently, uh, as recently as last week, we decided to uh, talk about uh, going a little bit deeper on, on, on a double groove, you know, and why not? Illmatic came out April 19th, 1994, 39 minutes and 48 seconds. Lots of producers on this. DJ Premier, Large Professor, LES, Nas, Pete Rock, Q-Tip, Faith N. So many, so many, so many um, artists are on this. It was on Columbia Records. But just honestly, a, um, a whole um, artistic credibility in rap. Um, the production is really awesome. The songs are all there. Um, if you're into... Like I said, awesome songs, um, awesome album, One Love, One Time for Your Mind, Represented, Ain't Hard to Tell, Half Time, New York State of Mind. It is all um, really, really there. Um, was on a couple, number one, um, it, it peaked at number one on a couple uh, charts, which is awesome. United States, it sold a two-time platinum um, album, which is always good to see and hear. Um a lot of impact, a lot of in, uh, legacy. Um, a lot of people put it up there with Enter of the Wu-Tang's uh, 36 Chambers and uh, Ready to Die by Notorious B.I.G. of that New York uh, hip-hop sound. But uh, just really, really, really awesome. A lot, a lot of top 10 uh, lists of some of the top 10 uh, greatest hip-hop albums of all time. Um, just really, 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 really awesome. A lot of lyrics that uh, sometimes people seem to uh, say and think that it's kind of like poetry. And honestly, if you listen deeper into some of this stuff, you're really not going to... Um, what are you going to say? You're not really going to... Um, you're not really going to miss out, you know, uh, as once described in one article that I read, uh, read it was uh, some of the most uh, urgent uh, poetry in music since uh, Public Enemy. That's a huge, huge, huge thing to say. And um, Nas, oh, going back about 10, 12 years ago, I saw him over the summer, put on a really, really great show. 
um, which was in um, uh, an environment which had other artists like Willie Nelson playing and the dead and Nas being mixed into kind of a, a, a festival like uh, experience was definitely really, really, really cool. And um, going back and digging into some of these albums um, makes you see just how elite um, Nas was as a rapper and maybe how some people take uh, some, some, some really, I don't want to say take, um, they borrow and they they kind of say, hey, you know what? We 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 like this uh, approach that he had on this album, so let's try to make it uh, let's try to make it a little bit a little bit better. Um, but again, check out New York State of Mind. Um, check out It Ain't Hard to Tell. Check out this album um, because you're not going to uh, you know One Love, uh, Life's a Bee, Halftime. You you're just not going to regret it, especially if you're looking for something in the um, in the old school hip hop uh, category, Dog Star. Um, who is Dog Star? Who are Dog Star? We might not talk about Dog Star too much. The reason we're talking about Dog Star was I just had a couple questions out there. Um, again, Keanu Reeves is in Dog Star, and uh, they're coming to town. How do you feel about uh, uh, what's the word? Actors in bands. You know, uh, recently we talked about uh, Thomas Ian Nichols from. Uh, the American Pie movie series and Rookie of the Year. He's got a band. He's coming to town. Kevin Bacon, the Bacon Brothers, they got a band. Um, has there been any artists who have been as big as their uh, musical career? I mean, a lot of musicians go to be actors and make some good roles, but what about actors becoming musicians? Um, I just wanted to send that question out there for you to make you think about it. Um, Dogstar, though, is coming to town, um, which... Again, they're coming all over. They're coming, they're playing casinos, and uh, they're getting, just honestly, getting their name out there. I'm not too familiar with Dogstar's work. Um, even in that initial release when it came out, there wasn't no huge single. I just remember saying, oh, it's Keanu Reeves' band. I wonder if these guys are any good. Um, you know, thinking back to somebody even like River Phoenix, they had a... He had a band. Um, honestly, go check out some of the uh, unreleased music or the released music, depends on how you're looking at it, on YouTube. Very interesting. Um, I find it interesting when um, uh, actors decide to tap into their uh, musical abilities because a lot of them, that's really what they wanted to be more than maybe the actor. And because they were able to have this freedom in acting and maybe be allotted some 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 money there, they're able to do things like putting on this this huge uh, twenty plus uh, date dog star tour in a, in a world where touring is tough. So um, it's always curious and, and makes me really think about things like that. Um, just like thinking into a, more of a band that doesn't get talked about a whole lot, and that is this band Wire. Um, if you have not listened to or, or heard Wire, um, they are a band who was formed in London in 1956. Uh, definitely post-punk, art punk, there's noise involved. Uh, this first album is a little bit different than their other albums. This first album has a huge, 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 uh, kind of like an underground, a little bit of a punk feeling. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you really are looking to get down and awesome and really get into it, go into uh, that debut album, um, Pink Flag, which is hugely influential to the whole entire hardcore punk uh, movement, which doing research uh, definitely is huge and honestly uh, negligates for more than just one little uh, spot in an episode is just how big it is. Um, but Pink Flag was definitely um, huge for its time. 35 minutes long, not an album you were going to be able to hear a lot of uh, songs on the radio, but one that uh, record collectors out there definitely, definitely wanted to look a little bit deeper to see who this band was and really, really what they were all about. Um, but uh, Pink Flag is a really good place to start. Um, lots of good songs on Pink Flag. Uh, X Lion Tamer, Brazil, uh, Three Girls Rumba. I could name, name all of the songs on the album because honestly, I wish we could just play it here and sit and just bob our heads and go, Wire, these guys are really, really, really good. Because uh, honestly, I didn't even get my start in Pink Flag. 
I got my start into an album, a uh, couple, 154. Uh, definitely could start hearing a little bit more of the uh, post-punk. You can start to hear some keyboards. Um, head track on there, I should have known better. Just really, 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 really gets it going. You could kind of hear, I'll never forget, where a co-worker showed me um, that album and definitely decided to say, hey, you know what? I like this. I like where uh, this is heading, and I like that um, I'm going to keep digging into more and more and more of, of Wire, which, um, honestly, I, I think you um, should go out there and, and dig a little bit more into, um, just really, just really dig more into uh, Wire, because you're just not going to regret it. Um, last week, we dug into uh, cool drummers and cool drum sounds, um, a little bit of a continuation for a drummer here that uh, doesn't get the... The props he deserves is Nigel Olson. You may not be familiar with him, but he has pretty much played on um, uh, every Elton John album. Just a huge live uh, presence in Elton John's band. Um, huge, 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 huge um, appearing on just just so many, so many awesome um, hit songs from um, just, I mean, from Empty Sky, you know, Mad Man Across the Water, Hunky Chateau, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, um, currently is in the live band still and playing um, with uh, Sir Elton John, which is just, you're saying, well, he's 75. 75, still touring. Um, they just are wrapping up their huge tour. I think they are being done touring. But you say to yourself, on this tour, um, just... Just really, 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 uh, I've heard nothing but positives on this uh, finale of uh, Elton John tour. So looking deeper on I, Nigel Olsen, um, even realizing while, you know, picking out things for tonight that he's got some solo albums that I think we need to uh, look into that could be actually pretty awesome. Um, um, one with Columbia Records uh, from in 78. There's like Nigel Olsen's the name of one. Nigel Olsen's the name of the second one. Nigel, he's got one Changing Tides. Dig a little bit deeper and get back. You can too, um, just to see um, what 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 that is. He even uh, wrote some songs. He wrote some songs for uh, Billy Joel. Was not uh, expecting this, uh, but uh, just honestly, he didn't write a song for Billy Joel. I'm sorry. He uh, did a, a cover of Billy Joel. I'm saying to myself, why would he write for Billy Joel? Um, good thing I caught that. Do not want you writing in and telling me he did not write for Billy Joel. But uh, again, cool talking about Nigel Olson. Um, just this past weekend, went to a wedding. Um, got to hear a lot of cool, 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 cool covers by this uh, cover man. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's Wonderwall. That wasn't uh, one that you probably would say to yourself, hey, you know what, I've heard that all the time. But again, weddings definitely uh, have a, a way of bringing out a lot of good music sometimes. And honestly, this guy was playing the uh, guitar here. I had to uh, catch a view of him um, because he just really, really was rocking and even had a little bit of Ray LaMontagne. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how often are you going to get a little bit of some wedding videos out there and wedding bands? Um, definitely is a huge uh, thing in the summer is weddings. And do you go with a band or do you go with a DJ? Personally, I went with a DJ. Could have had a band. Had the opportunity to have a band. Um, unfortunately, the wife ruled that uh, it was going to be a, a DJ. So, yes, we did have a DJ. But then again, sometimes... Uh, Having a DJ is is good because you get to go up and tell the DJ different things to play. Um, at my wedding, again, I hate to uh, bring him up again, but my father requested the Gap Band's party train. And then the whole entire procession decided to do the party train throughout the whole entire uh, uh, Lansing, Illinois Country Club. It was a really, really good time. Um, definitely heard a lot of different things. Um, heard the song... Um, Here's a little bit of my facial expression on one of the, another song that I heard at the wedding. <laughs> song called Heaven. Was uh, not familiar with it, but then again, sometimes at uh, music, uh, at weddings, you, you just don't know what you're going to hear. Um, and... Hearing a song called Heaven, well, I guess maybe at a wedding you should hear that to uh, to be explained. Um, but tonight, uh, today, 
uh, afternoon, whenever you seem to be listening to this, uh, go back and listen to some of that awesomeness that we talked about. Check out that uh, Stephen Van Zandt documentary. Check in the Sepultura's uh, catalog. Check out those first couple Santana albums, and I'll get back to you with that awesome review on um, their live uh, concert coming up. Wire definitely needs to be dug into. Nas's uh, debut, Illmatic. Dig into that a little bit deeper, um, a little bit more, a little bit more fuller. Um, let me know uh, what you think about actors or actresses in their own bands and what did you have at your wedding? Um, but all that being said, um, I really appreciate you joining us. I appreciate you tuning in to all the awesome stuff, like always, on the Sadistic Penguin Studios um, YouTube channel. Please go and check out the Sadistic Studios, uh, penguinstudios.com. Awesome articles. Some real cool articles on Ghost dropped recently. Raise Against the Machine, movies, toys, whatever you may find. Um, check out the last couple at Drafty episodes. Those are really awesome. And this week, if you're into uh, uh, cool, cool movies, we'll be talking Donnie Brasco on uh, Sunday. So please check that all out. Thank you, thank you, everybody, so much. I appreciate you with all the questions that you always send in, and I uh, wanted to just say thanks you so much. Thanks you, thanks you, thanks you. Uh, the hookup on music appreciates it, and uh, well, as always, we will be back again next week with something awesome. We may have a guest; could be a surprise. Who knows? You just never know around here what's going to end up spinning and what's going to happen. But one thing I do know is that I am highly appreciative of always taking this time and always spending this time with you talking and spinning tunes. My name is Tony. This is the uh, Hookup on Music. Everybody out there, take care.